Also, just real quick, just while I have you, <laughs> something else. This is not. This is no longer Nick's fear corner. This is now. More, it's more like Nick's hate corner now. Well, that seems. I shouldn't say that. But he, welcome to Nick's pertur real perturbed corner. He, Nick is perturbed here in this corner. So similarly to the uh, the problem that I have with um, advertisements for the eyelash applicator clamp, the uh, you know what I have just realized I really really hate. It's not TikTok. I mean, I'm not gonna do commentary on TikTok. I'm too good. It's not TikTok that I don't like. It's teenage internet celebrities that I don't like. And here's one big, real big reason. I was reading an a news article about them. There's uh, there's this one TikTok girl, Addison Ray, I believe is her name. If you haven't heard of her, I mean, don't look into her. I, I can explain it pretty fast. She's like, um, like she dances. Yeah, and so there's a lot of debate right now because she's been a part of the big, the big filming, the big uh, TikToking house, the, the the TikTok tabernacle, if you will. It's the hype house, I believe, is the name of it. Anyway, she was a big part of that. But well, now who's she dating? Is it the YouTuber David Dobrik? We don't know. And so now there's all this drama. It's like, oh, who's she dating now? Not I. Not that I care, but I was looking into it. And so th there was another boy. I don't even know this other boy's name, but he has very curly hair that he has on a, with a with a tight fade around sort of. And he wears all these baggy, you know, champion sweatshirts and stuff like that. And he wears his joggers. What am I thinking of? Uh, well, tight sweatpants. And he does all this this TikTok, you know, dance moves. And and he and her used to be very close as friends. But all the news outlets and media outlets would ask her, well, "Are you dating the curly hair champion sweatshirt boy?" And she would be like, "No, we're just friends. We're just trying to figure things out." And that's a valid, you know, that's a valid response if you're like, "Well, no, we just don't really know what we are. We're just, you know, being friends, having fun." And that's great, and I love that for them. I don't really care. But you know what I I hated was what he did because he also said the same thing. And then they decided they were just gonna not be with each other. And then she, you know, is whatever with David Dobrik now maybe. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. But 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 much later, he then um, tweeted because he has a large following of people that follow his tweets. What do you call them? Tweet chasers. He has a, a large group of tweet chasers followers, maybe. And he just tweeted out on his public celebrity account, kind of what do you call them? Influencer account. He was like, "I miss you." He just typed, "I miss you," and he sent that, and that was the whole tweet. And it had maybe like an emoji, like a mm -hmm, or something like that. I don't really know all the emojis. Or maybe it was like a sad one, where it was like. Oh, I miss you, and uh, he and he tweeted that out. So he just tweeted out, "I miss you," and everybody could see that. So all his fans saw that, and they were like, "I bet that's about Mrs. Addison Rae." And they were like, "Oh, how sad. She's moved on. He misses her." But he just tweeted that out at anybody, and it's not the fans' fault for speculating that that's who he was talking about. They're probably right. He should not be allowed to do that. If I okay, let's say I I hate Dick Cheney. I don't, but let's say I hate Dick Cheney. If I were to tweet, if I had a big following of people and I was, I just tweeted out, I hate you, and my fans were like, oh, he probably means Dick Cheney. That's not fair. I should have to have the confrontation with Dick Cheney. I shouldn't just be allowed to tweet out whatever. I'm flabbergasted. A better example, if I were in love with former vice president and presidential candidate Al Gore, I couldn't just tweet out, you know, to all of my, sort of my followers, my tweet chasers. I don't have a, a tweeter. <laughs> Uh, but if I did, I couldn't just tweet out, I love you, with no repercussions. Because then what if my fans didn't know I was talking about the former vice president and presidential candidate Al Gore? Is he talking to Meg Ryan from Sleepless in Seattle? There's no way of you knowing who I was talking to. I'm not in love with Meg Ryan. I like Al Gore, not romantically, but I love him. He was probably a not great person, but he had great ideas. He was right about global warming, I think. Anyway, so so if you're watching this and you're a and you're a teenage influencer, stop tweeting out ambiguous nonsense and making your fans decipher it for you because there's real people's lives on the line. I mean, not um, they're not endangered, but you don't know what kind of repercussions it could have. So so stop it, stop it. I don't like it. Stop it. Yeah, that was all. That's that was Nick's hate corner. That was the most uh, drama I've ever had to convey in such little time. I'm killing it today. <laughs> seen the movie Tootsie? If you haven't, it's not, it's not important. I'll explain it. So basically, so it's Dustin Hoffman. Ugh, he's broke. So it's, uh, it's Dustin Hoffman. He, um, it plays an actor. He lives in New York City. Uh, in New York City? Uh, he lives in New York, and he's evidently a real big dingus. Nobody wants to hire him because he's such a meanie pants. And he doesn't, he's not super cooperative. Uh, if you're an actor, hi to those of you that are watching, uh, if you're an actor, you know. 
got to be professional, got to be nice. You're always looking for work, obviously. You're always looking for work. Ah, I did it again. Well, gosh darn it. So he goes to his manager and his manager's like, nobody's gonna hire you, nobody's gonna produce your play that you really wanna produce without your best friends and your brother, or best friend, I don't know, Bill Murray? I don't remember if they're brothers or if they're just friends, they live together in a really super fun apartment, in my opinion. Well, I mean, it was really dingy for the 70s, but I really think it's fun. Basically just an apartment that's got like magazines on the ground everywhere. And uh, he can't find any work, so he goes to his manager, and his manager's like, nobody's gonna produce your play, nobody's gonna produce your play for you and your best friend or your brother, I don't remember. Anyway, so he's like, I'm Dustin Hoffman, I promise I'm gonna get that role, I'm gonna do whatever it takes, but I'm gonna get that role. Well, and, and it's really more just, I'm gonna get, like, money, you know, to put on the play that I wanna put on. So anyway, so he uh, goes out for the same audition that his girlfriend slash just female friend, and they go out uh, for the same part, but he does it, but she doesn't ever know that he does this because he dresses up as a lady. It's sort of like Mrs. Doubtfire. And he goes out, and the director, uh, Dagny Coleman, uh, if any of you guys have seen 9 to 5, Dolly Parton and Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, I believe, Dolly Parton's the important part of it, he plays the boss. He always plays a sexist scumbag and that's no different here. He's a director and he's hiring for his uh, soap opera or something. Anyway, so he hires Dustin Hoffman for like a general hospital kind of show basically. But Dustin Hoffman being the sort of liberal minded in, in the movie, his name's like Michael Dorsey or something, being the liberal minded sort of guy that he is, uh, when he gets the role, he starts like empowering women as this female character. The male doctors keep coming and trying to kiss him and stuff and, uh, the, he, and he's like, you don't, you don't touch me, don't make advances towards me. I, I, I'm a independent woman and I will not be. It's on Netflix right now if you, I mean, if you want to watch it. But anyway, so very good movie. There's, you know, some probably things that wouldn't fly in today's political climate. But more importantly, it's that apartment. like this movie. Main reason, all right. Main reason though, his awesome apartment with Bill Murray. Ouch. Ouch. All right. So, we've got all of these guys. These are all very sharp. Muscle tub. That's a pen, that's a pen, and that is a permanent marker. So we're done, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not what, my, what you know, <laughs> I'm not one much in the way of podcasting. I don't think that's, you know, really my vibe, but I am all about that stand in front of a camera and just talk. Basically all my videos are just podcasts, but it, you can watch my face talk. Well, that's that thing. I mean, yeah, thanks for sticking around, but it's time to go as soon as I wink. Wait, now I have to really try hard not to accidentally wink.